Hey guys, my name is Brittany and welcome back to my YouTube channel. You guys, in today's video, I'm going to share with you how I teach my daughter language arts without using an all-in-one language arts curriculum. So if any of you guys are new here to my channel, again, my name is Brittany. I'm a homeschooling mom to three girls, ages 11, four, and two, and I'm in my third year of homeschool. So you guys, I'm really going to go ahead and dive in deep on how I actually teach my daughter language arts. Um, in the past, you guys, I have used an all-in-one language arts curriculum but I found that by separating out each of the pieces of language arts I really was able to um, cater my daughter's uh, curriculum to her specific needs especially when she is working at higher levels at certain things and she's maybe working just right on grade level on certain components of language arts so as you guys know language arts is like the biggest sub subject it has so many categories uh, within the language arts I mean we have our our grammar, writing, spelling, vocabulary, reading comprehension, literature, I mean poetry, you name it, it's all falls under um, language arts. So you guys, I'm not going to lie, uh, when I did decide to uh, stop using an all-in-one curriculum and uh, piece together my own language arts curriculum, I did feel overwhelmed uh, when I started off this journey. One book that was very helpful in choosing all the categories when it came to like uh, my daughter's language arts, especially for specific levels. I utilized this book right here, which is called Home Learning Year by Year. And I was really able to figure out what Brielle needed to learn within language arts each year, how to pick the subjects and how to pick the best curriculums that suits her. Um, so you guys, I'm going to go ahead and get into it and I'm going to stop rambling and let's go ahead and get started. So for grammar, you guys, we are actually utilizing Fix It Grammar. This is our second book we have completed this year. We've completed Fix It Grammar, The Nose Tree. You guys, I'm not going to lie. When I first started Fix the Grammar, I really didn't feel like just doing one sentence a day was enough to really master uh, the grammar skills. But you guys, I definitely was proven wrong because after completing two books of Fix the Grammar, I definitely have seen uh, hum humendous like strides with my daughter's grammar. These uh, 15 minute daily uh, grammar lessons, they are so effective. Um, it's short, it's sweet. Um, I love how it's concise and it goes over over each part of speech systematically um, and it's just crazy how much your kiddos grammar skills will improve over time especially by utilizing fix-it grammar so I love this. This year, we also have utilized using uh, Rod and Staff English, but I found with Brielle doing uh, more writing this year, uh, sticking to Fix-It Grammar has been a better fit for our overall language arts flow. So for Fix-It Grammar, you guys, we actually do Fix-It Grammar four days out the week. So that's just Monday through Thursday. Now let's go ahead and get into writing for Brielle. So this year for writing, Brielle is actually utilizing Structure and Style Level 1A. This uh, curriculum for writing is actually geared for a grade third to third through fifth and you guys if you're not new to my channel you already know how much I have been really really enjoying IEW this year right now we are actually at the halfway point of IEW and I can attest and I can truly say uh, my daughter's writing has you know improved tremendously by just finishing this program halfway through uh, she actually follows the lessons uh, taught by Andrew Pudawa the video lessons I come in later as mom and editor I actually have three videos right now you guys on my channel all about IEW where I go into a flip through of IEW in one of my videos. I made a video talking about my initial review of IEW after using it for 30 days, my pros and cons of this particular curriculum. And I also have a more recent video where I showed us going through a week of IEW structure and style. So if you guys want to see more videos about IEW, I will definitely link them down below. But you guys, this definitely has been one of my highlights when it's coming to our like homeschool this year. Uh, uh, Brielle really, really has been enjoying IEW as well. So this is what we're using for writing. She does writing four days, four to five days out the week, depending on the editing process. But uh, it's really has been four days out the week she's been doing it. And IEW takes anywhere between 30 to 45 minutes on those four days that she is doing it. So that is her grammar and writing. So now let's go ahead and get into reading comprehension. 
So for reading comprehension, you guys, in the past, I have just used uh, like those Scholastics reading tests at the end of the year just to test her reading comprehension. But this year, you guys, I have chose a different book for reading comprehension. We are actually using The Reading Detective by The Critical Thinking Company. And you guys, like I love this book. It is so great. I love how they teach the kiddos reading comprehension. My daughter is reading a passage and not only does she have to select the right answer, but she has to figure out within the passage which sentence led her to that conclusion. Uh, she is doing more literature analysis in answering the comprehension questions. Um, they've been talking a lot about figurative language and she has to inference what she think will happen next in the story. And I really love this uh, book from the Critical Thinking Company. It really has her thinking uh, when she does this. We do Reading Detective on Fridays only just because um, she's not doing her grammar and writing. So it really allows us to be able to focus on that passage that she's doing and I definitely have seen growth when it comes to like her reading comprehension. Reading comprehension and utilizing books like this is really important in my homeschool because Brielle actually has to get tested in our state so I love just having these books and just doing them at least once a week when it when it comes to like her critical thinking, reading comprehension skills, just making sure she is still uh, staying on par, especially when it comes to that. So I really have been loving Reading Detective this school year. For spelling and vocabulary, we have been doing 180 days of spelling and word study. Earlier this year, we did try out Wordly Wise, but I thought by doing Wordly Wise and 180 days, it was really too much. And I was finding Brielle was retaining the vocabulary words a lot better uh, by the way that 180 days of vocabulary and word study actually teaches it. So um, 180 days of vocabulary and word study, it's not just like spelling, you guys. Um, they talk about prefixes, suffixes, fixes. They talk about the Latin root words and um, I love how she's still completing sentences. She's doing synonyms, antonyms, analogies. Um, it is so many different fun activities in 180 days of spelling and word study. I actually have a comparison video on my channel of 180 days of spelling and word study in Evan Moore uh, where I show a more in-depth view about 180 days of spelling and why I love this program so much. But Brielle loves it. She's retaining vocabulary a lot better. When it's coming to like the spelling portion of of it Brielle actually has mastered the skill of spelling phonetically we are mainly using this book when it comes to like her uh, vocabulary so for spelling she is doing it five days out the week Monday through uh, Thursday being the spelling activities and then on Friday she has her spelling test so as you guys can see um, on Fridays it's really light for Brielle when it comes to language art she is doing spelling and vocabulary and her reading detective are the only two things she is actually doing in the uh, language arts component on Friday Fridays. Now, another component of language arts is literature, you guys. And uh, this year, we actually have been doing our literature through history. And I'm finding that that is like the best way to add in literature in your homeschool without like, uh, you know, just uh, adding in too many books. <laughs> I mean, I know in homeschool is never enough books, but sometimes I do feel like um, by doing it through history is definitely a fun way to read more literature. We are doing two uh, history curriculums this year. The first history curriculum we are actually doing is called Heart and Soul by the Heritage Mom Pack, and we definitely have been enjoying that curriculum. We do Heart and Soul, which is our African American history on Fridays, and that is how Brielle is getting literature. And her main history curriculum we are doing this year is A River of Voices, and we do A River of Voices two days out the week. So she is getting history, historical fictions through literature, and um, I really am finding that we are really, really enjoying both of those curriculums, especially adding in more literature in our homeschool. Um, when it comes to like Brielle's reading um, and other literature as far as in our homeschool, I always have three books in circulation for us. She has her independent fun reader and right now her independent fun reader is The Sweetest Sound. She has an independent assigned reader which typically goes along history and her independent assigned reader that she's reading right now is Pocahontas and the Stranger and then we will We'll also have our read aloud. So that is how we circulate literature as well. Sometimes with our read alouds, I will add in a literature guide. You guys, I've been finding adding in literature guides has definitely been a fun way for us to really analyze the literature that we have been reading, talk about different literary elements, onomatopoeias, personification, similes, metaphors. It's really, really fun when I add in a literature guide. This year, you guys, I have scheduled out 
three literature guides for us to do to really make it um, easily attainable for us. And I don't want every reel out we're reading to have a literature guide because sometimes um, for our reel outs, I just want us to just sit down and read it for fun. So we started off our homeschool year. Uh, our first read aloud was The Lemonade War and we did a Brave Writers Literature Guide with Lemonade War and it was so much fun. Bria really talked a lot about onomatopoeias with that literature guide and she really, really enjoyed this book, Lemonade War and really analyzing those um, literary elements. We talked and had a lot of discussion questions with the Brave Writer Literature Guide. So we really, really enjoyed using a literature guide with this particular book. Um, scheduled throughout the year, I do have two more literature guides that we are going to be doing in our um, next couple of quarters. We are going to be doing Stella by Starlight by Brave Rider. And then here goes the book right here. Um, we're going to be doing this one uh, starting off our new semester really, really soon. So I'm so excited to dig into another uh, literature guide. And the last literature guide that we're going to be completing in our fourth quarter is going to be Ancestor Approved by Brave Rider. And here goes the book right here. So this is how Brielle is really getting in all of those literary components that um, I really want her to learn this year and how I knew which literary components to for her to learn this year was again through this book homeschool home learning year by year this deck actually was a really really good tool I really wish I would have picked up this book in my first year of homeschooling because it really has helped me to see uh, what she needs to learn learn for each level I know um, things like this may not be as popular in the homeschool community but it's really really important for me to make sure each level uh, that Brielle is on we are actually learning learning what we need to learn. Um, so I am really, really excited about this book and it definitely has been a helpful tool. Now, the last thing that we do do that encompasses language arts is poetry. Uh, we just typically read poetry in the morning time. And I'm going to share with you guys some of our favorite poetry books. Um, I haven't gone into like an analyzing poetry and doing different things like that yet, but I know in the future we will. So for right now, we're just utilizing different poetry books and just reading them for fun. So some of our favorite poetry books we have read and still read is um, Hip Hop Speaks to Children. And this one actually comes with a CD. So we love listening to this one in the car and this was definitely one of our fun poetry books. Another poetry book we've loved over the years has been Maya Angelou's uh, poetry book. Um, this actually comes in a lot of series with other poets and I definitely want to pick up more of these books uh, featuring different poets but so far I only have this one right here which is by Maya Angelou. Another poetry book I have is called Just Like Me. And we read this one earlier this year and it was really, really cute, all the different poems that was curated in this book. Um, another poetry book I have is Out of Wonder and this has definitely been another great poetry book. And then the last poetry book, which has to be like one of my daughter's favorite poetry books is Sing a Song of Seasons. So that is actually how we cover poetry in our homeschool. So you guys, I know it seems like a lot, but this is how I do language arts in my homeschool. I really love not using the all-in-one curriculum because I'm really able to pull in different pieces of language arts. You guys, sometimes if I don't feel like it, I'm able to say, okay, Brie, we're not gonna do spelling this week, or no, we're not gonna do this this week. We're only gonna focus on writing without it actually interrupting uh, any parts or lessons. Um, because I was finding when I was utilizing all-in-one curriculums, I didn't have that like like customization when it came to our language arts. And um, even though it was overwhelming at first to piece together all of my language arts components, I'm so happy I have done it this year. And I really, really have been enjoying language arts uh, for Brielle this year. And she has been enjoying it too. Um, she also loves doing a lot of creative writing and fun writing and by me keeping and separating out her language arts. Um, if she is doing creative writing a little bit longer uh, that day, I'm able to say, okay, we're not going to do spelling and, and grammar. We're just going to focus on creative writing today. Um, I really, really love that freedom um, that I have now that we don't do an all-in-one language arts curriculum. So you guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you enjoy hearing how we do language arts in our homeschool. In the comments down below, let me know if you use the all-in-one curriculum. If you don't, what are the components of language arts that you are doing in your homeschool this year? So you guys, thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing everybody in my next one. Bye.